Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel and today as requested by you on my previous video of the modded drivers of the Amernime, well the former Amernime drivers now called Radiant.id drivers I now bring you the tutorial of how to install those same modded drivers as I have two tutorials of these before but uh, they actually had console installation before, then they changed to a much easier installation and now with the most recent drivers we have back the console installer once again. So for some people and mostly for beginners it might seem a bit uh, overwhelming and that's exactly why I'm making this video to actually show you how, how you have to install the drivers, basically that's it, it's nothing out of this world actually. Before anything, what you need is to do a clean installation using Display Driver Installer, the so-called DDU. You just need, you don't and you shouldn't install these drivers over any modded drivers, over any previous modded drivers, and especially over the official AMD drivers. If you install these drivers over the AMD drivers without actually doing the... Um, the display driver in installer, basically the clean installation, without doing that you may have lots of problems and the same applies obviously if you are doing that to the normal official drivers, okay? You should always clean install to avoid any kind of issues, okay? It doesn't mean that you're gonna have issues because you're overriding the previous drivers, but you may have issues and those issues might be related to not using the clean installation methods. If you don't know how to do this, just watch this video passing right now in the screen where I show you the correct way to uninstall and install back again the AMD drivers, okay? It is as simple as it can be. And just because of that, I'm gonna leave you with today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And as shown in the previous video, the first thing that you have to do is go to Google, search for the Amernime Zone, go to that same website of the Amernime Zone drivers, go to the bottom of the page and select the 23.9.1 PVN drivers, download them, go to the desktop and extract them. As soon as you have the extracted folder, you'll have something like this, so WHQL AMD Software Hybrid Edition 23.9.1 SVR. Once again, PVN Flex, PVN means Polaris, Vega and Navi. Polaris are the RX 4500 series, Vega are the Vega cards, 56, um, uh, 64, uh, Vega 7, Vega 8, Vega 3, the ones inside the APUs and so on, and then Navi are the most recent 5000, 6000 and 7000 series cards. You open the folder, after opening the folder all you have to do is run the setup, setup, bam. Now after running the setup you have several options, you have for example a standard driver profile, you have the beta with FlexArc uh, 3.0 driver profile for APU slash Mac with discrete GPU eGPU. Let me just mute the audio by the way. Okay. Um, and then you have universal CC UI and components, basically this is the Radeon software, okay? Then you have the extras and then you have toolkit because some people may actually use this. So we have lots of options. but. To start installing the drivers, the first thing that you want to do is go to the option number one, which is the 23.9.1 SVR, SVR driver selection for universal Radeon devices. So you just press one, as you can see, one here, and then enter. Bam. As soon as you enter that new menu, you actually have the regular packages, and then you have the legacy AMD Inc. slash deck packages, and I believe it's something like encoding decoding or encoder decoder. I don't really know, but you don't need any legacy packages as you once again have Polaris, Vega, or Navi card, so you don't really need that. Now what you have here is the WDDM 3.1, WDDM 3.0 and WDDM 2.7 and I believe that the WDDM has something to do with um, with the Windows with the Windows Store versions and the AMD versions, okay, of the drivers themselves. So let's select the 3.1 which is the most recent one. Then we have the 3.1 SVR beta package. Then we have the standard package, which, which is actually the current AMD one, and then you have older packages with the 23.5.2, special edition or something, and then we have the 22.11.2. Basically, you're selecting different kernels, and from what I understand, different kernels can actually 
help in some scenarios. For example, I don't really know if they actually help as well with the shader cache loading, but since the 283.5.2 um, kernel is actually here, I do believe that installing the newer drivers with this kernel, the 283.5.2, can actually, can actually help in terms of shader cache loading problems like the ones, for example, in God of War. But after actually doing this video, I will just test God of War uh, fast and I'll see if this actually applies, if the stutters uh, from shader cache loading actually um, actually disappear as soon as you install the kernel, the 283.5.2 kernel, because once again, this driver version does not include the shader cache loading problems on the, on the most recent drivers. Anyway, anyway, for now you want the standard package, the number two. Press two once again, bam. Then you have select installation method. You can use the, the Microsoft native device installer, or you can use the SDI, which uses an alternative snappy driver installer. We can just use the Microsoft installer. It's much better. Bam. Now, after the system install the drivers, you'll be prompt with this, uh, with this menu right now. So with the configuration of the switchable GPU con configuration, sorry. And it says on, on mobile devices, uh, Microsoft Multi Adapter works only in Windows 11 Crossfire, may be unavailable after activate this configuration. Now, we have the Multi Adapter and we have several, uh, well, we have several options, like for example, the single, the single monitor mode and then the multi-monitor mode. And I can tell you right away that if you select, for example, the single monitor mode, with AMD default, your multi-monitor setups will still work. I'm using a multi-monitor uh, multi setup here and I was afraid that it wouldn't work, but it worked. I just connected the second monitor and it worked flawlessly with no issues. So this is mainly for the, for the APUs and integrated GPU systems. For example, one monitor with your iGPU and another, another monitor with your GPU, so this uh, is for that, I believe. But for most users, you can just go, for example, and select the AMD default, factory AMD driver default, and it will work that uh, with no issues. So we just go there, we pick the AMD default here with the arrows and then enter. Bam, AMD default. Now we have the ULPS power state. ULPS is ultra low power saving mode. What this does is that, um, well, it actually disables the ultra low power state modes of the AMD cards, where they actually decrease the frequencies and voltages a lot to kind of save power. Now, ULPS is not an issue for most people, but I know that there were and there are some people that have issues if they do not disable the ULPS mode. They have stutters, uh, they have the card not performing as it should, so if you don't have any kind of issues, just go with the auto mode. But if you have issues um, with ULPS and you actually had to disable ULPS before, you can just go here and select, for example, the force disable mode or the disabled mode, for example. If you have, uh, let's say, MS Afterburner, you can just open MS Afterburner and you can enable or disable ULPS at will, as you see, at will um, anytime you want. So I wouldn't bother with this at all and I would just go with the automatic. Uh, with the automatic uh, option. So once again, bam. Now, after the automatic options, oh, sorry about that, we have the AMD software branding configuration, which basically gives you the, the different accents and the different UI configurations. We have the adrenaline, which is the most common one. We have the enterprise, which is basically the one that comes with the pro drivers. You have the creator also with a blue accent. Uh, I never actually tested the, the creator, uh, the creator edition actually never did. And then we have the Radeon light with blue accent as well with a minimal software. And then we have the cloud light with white accent, which is basically a cloud edition. And I never saw this one actually. I never saw the creator one, but definitely never saw a white edition as well. This is interesting. But for most, using for example, the adrenaline is the way you wanna go. If you want to test the other ones, you can do it because later you can actually install the adrenaline once again. But let's go with the adrenaline one, bam. Then you have the option to select in between the, the light, basic, standard and advanced, which is basically the, 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 the option that AMD gives you when you're installing the drivers. And what you want to do is go with the standard because it comes with software features, uh, GPU tuning and so on. Basically everything that the AMD Radeon software gives you officially. Uh, enter once again. Sorry, the camera is also bobbing because I'm pressing the, the table too hard. 
And once again, we have the driver operation mode. Now, this is where things get interesting because, as it says here, official AMD driver mini port mode, AMD mode, operates Radeon driver packages as stock slash official AMD driver mode. But then we have the Radeon ID driver mini port modes. We have the minimal with bare minimum payload optimization on driver level, recommended for emulator based apps. So if you are using emulators, this minimal installation will also help you a lot in terms of performance, latency and so on. So this is a way to go. If you are using emulators, you go with a minimal uh, Radian ID mode. Now, if the if you want to go to the basic, we have basic barebone payload optimization applied on driver level. So an improvement over the, the minimal level. And then we have the standard, which is the factory community driver default. Basically, if you select one of these three, one of these th three Radian ID modes, you can actually get optimizations over the official drivers, optimizations that aren't presented on the official drivers, let's say like the memory compression, uh, some more the X11 and the X9 optimizations. So it may actually be the, the way that you want to go with these drivers, okay? I'm just saying because it might help in some scenarios, so you might want to try them out. The most that it, that, that it can it can happen is that it actually doesn't work that well for you and you can just go to the U once again and install the official AMD mode, which is the one that I'm gonna do. Bam, enter. Once again, it is installing. Now it asks you if you want to install the AMD Radeon software interface. Of course you won't, otherwise you wouldn't have the interface, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. And now you come to this with select UI dependencies to install. Now, you selected that you wanted to install the, the, Radeon, the Radeon software itself. So now you have to select one of these Radeon installers. For example, the version 5.5 to 83.20, which is the beta release. But we installed the latest common release, which, which was the 23.10. So this is the one that you want to install. You press two and then enter once again, and it will it will automatically install once again the the Radeon software as you see. After it being completed, you just go close, and then uh, basically you go and press number one to install the Relieve DVR add-on. Okay, it's better to do it in case you have an APU, for example, to enable the recording and streaming features. One, bam, and it's done. Okay, now you press B for back, and basically you have everything installed. And once again, if you want to activate HyperRx, all you have to do is go press number eight, bam, and then you select HyperRx to actually override, override sorry, to actually override uh, one of these profiles, okay? It doesn't matter which profile, which profile it is because it doesn't really matter. It just overrides the global settings. So um, you're good to go anyways. I usually just select the eSports profile, but it doesn't really matter, believe me. Uh, for example, we can just go with the eSports and then you press enter. Okay. Let's open the AMD settings. I believe we should do a... a um, it should do indeed a, a restart first. And strangely, I don't have the HyperRx functioning here. I believe it's because I didn't restart the computer. I actually need to do it. Let me just do it and show you once again like I did in my previous video. Now, as soon as I rebooted the computer and actually went to the AMD software again, of course, after doing the HyperRx process once again, so I rebooted the computer, did the HyperRx option once again, the number eight, and then uh, I went and opened the AMD settings. And once again, as you can see, the Radeon Super Resolution, the Radeon Anti-Lag and Radeon Boost are working at the same time. Because without the HyperRx feature, you can't have all of these three enabled. Basically, you can't enable Anti-Lag, Super Resolution, Chill, uh, without, uh, without, no, with the Radeon Boost at the same time. Radeon Boost will work only with the other features enabled. In this case, since we forced the HyperRx feature, we can actually enable the Radeon Boost with Anti-Lag, or the Radeon Boost with Radeon Super Resolution. The Super Resolution can work with Anti-Lag, but none of them can work together with Radeon Boost. So once again, HyperRx is enabled. 
that's a good thing. Now, if you're having the two FPS problem, this is actually uh, this, this is, uh, is actually due to one of the two things. Or you did not do a clean installation of the drivers with DDU as you should before installing these drivers, or, or you might have the frame rate target control enabled. Okay, it is now disabled, but the first time that I actually installed these drivers when I was showing you on my HyperRx video, I actually had the frame rate target control enabled to 70. Automatically, I didn't do anything, I just installed the drivers and it was enabled to 70. And in your case, it might be automatically enabled, for example, to 2 or 15 or something like that. So anyway, go here and go to the frame rate target control and make sure it is disabled. And once again, make sure to do a clean Windows, a uh, clean driver installation, not a Windows installation, but a clean driver installation because those are the reasons for your two FPS or most likely are the reasons for your two FPS problem inside the games. Otherwise, that's basically it for this video. And well guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video as it does help a lot. Also, if you have any more doubts, leave them in the comment section because I believe that um, that the Raiden ID programmer, basically the, the guy or the guys that make these drivers, they are actually watching some of the comment section. And that's why uh, they know or they knew that, some, that a lot of people had the 2 FPS problem and they actually told me that those were usually due to the frame rate target control or some more things. So leave your comment in the comment section if you have more doubts or or let's say uh, or if you're having some issues even after this tutorial because they will most likely see it and I'll see it as well and we both will try and we will both try to um, yeah the Portuguese and the English mixing up we'll try to help you as soon as we can because that's how we treat the community or at least how we try to treat the community good in a good way of course thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video guys cheers